Welcome back everyone to another episode of Advanced Tactics Gold number 21 if I'm not mistaken. And we're zoomed out with the hex coloring on so yes it means it's time for another update. Basically what I'm seeing overall is that the Russians are kind of taking over. <laughs> and that's good because that's going to set us up for this kind of boss fight at the very end where we are going to try to gobble up as much as we can of France and Germany. Um, Russia is definitely going to do quite a gobbling up of at least France. You can see that there's actually an isolated pocket of Germany here. They're all just fighting each other, which is good. That's what I want. Uh, so what I suspect this game is going to devolve into eventually, or not devolve, I shouldn't be so negative, evolve into, is us in the West and the Russians in the East, and it'll be probably a bit of a Cold War at first, if I can steal that term. Um, we'll just probably build up some research after we take... My goal is take Velberg, Fishhawk, Neem, and I already took Coutance. Hold some kind of line, especially if I have a few of the factories I've captured from um, the AI. I can re-sort my forces, reorganize, so we can actually get the three headquarters that I want. Maybe even four, um, because we have so many units that we might be pretty heavily over the staff penalty. And I'm not sure if it's worth it or not, just... We have to think about how far units are going to be away. We, if the units can stay within like a, a four hex radius of the headquarters as we're moving forward, then we'll be okay. One thing we'll also have to consider is maybe building some more engineers because in order to, excuse me, in order to keep um, my secondary headquarters supplied, they're going to need to be uh, attached to roads somehow, which is going to be very difficult up by this. Um, not that there's anything of strategic value up here, but... Okay, so that's just a reevaluation of how things are going in the world and my end game scheme. Let's go ahead and turn off hex coloring and jump into the action. We've made some good pushes so far. We took Coutance and one push. And right now I would say that we're kind of on the road to Fishhawk, which has two paths, obviously. We have the normal road, the central road, we'll call it. And then we have the coastal road, the southern road. Right now, they are defending the southern road pretty well. I don't know where this unit came from, but it's a new unit with relatively high readiness. So it's not going to be easy for us to push down this road, but my goal here is if I can break them in this square where it's in the plains with my armor, then I should be able to... I mean, the goal is to break them here so that I don't have to um, fight them in the in the marshes and the swamps if my armor doesn't break them in the plains and they fall into the swamps my armor kind of has to give up because it's not at fighting at only one quarter your your combat strength is not a tenable position so we'll have to send the armor through this central road and one of the things i have to be careful of here is this armor currently has the ability to push past this bridge which is hugely important so what i want to do is get this armor involved in the attack but if he does that, he's not going to have enough movement points to cross this bridge. And I don't think any of my units have the ability to cross, if not him. So unfortunately, we have to make a tactical decision here that we're going to just leave these forces. And the good news is um, one strategy we could do, totally, totally viable, is if we attack them here and they don't really break, we can just go around. <laughs> So we can go around, cut them off, and just bleed them out. So that's uh, definitely one strategy. It's probably going to be the strategy I use because I don't suspect they're so strong with these forces. I don't think that we'll be able to capture them immediately. Which means, I mean, the only thing it really means is this oil we captured a little bit later than I had hoped. And that's fine. We'll note that this armor does, in fact, have to move backwards to move forward. So movement to get here is 70, but that's not just moving directly in. That's because he does 40 here. 20 here, and then tanks move 10 along the road, so now he does 70, 80. So he can get over here. It'll only cost him 90 to get here, actually, because uh, it's currently costing 20 because of the zone of control issues, but um, as soon as, if we attack these guys and succeed, their zone of control effect on this hex will be gone, and he'll have the ability to... Well, he'll only have the ability to move here no matter what, so I might as well just move him there, just because... Um, if we take any, either of these, they still were enemy territory, so it costs an additional action point, which he is never going to be able to have. So we'll just move him there. He said, that's it. 
And now, like I said, what I think I'm gonna do is move this guy forward, but we'll wait for the zone of control effect to be um, decreased here first. So I think the only people who can attack this, um, we have two options, basically. We can attack from two sides, which would give us a 5% concentric bonus. So we could do the attack like this. And that's probably, that's my initial thought was to do that. But on second thought, the better thing to do is gonna be attack from just one hex so that we don't get this minus 50% river um, crossing attack penalty. We need all the attack points we can get. And since this, since this is infantry, I want a non-AT gun. Damn it, dude, this is insane. Okay, actually we can do something a little tricky here. I don't want the AT guns attacking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna transfer the AT guns to my machine gun group because they're not gonna attack in this hex anyway, in this um, turn anyway. So yeah, it reduces their readiness a little bit, but they still have full action points. They'll get that readiness back at the end of the turn. And now I freed up the Rangers from having the, the um, artillery with them, which I didn't want. One, it would ruin my attack stack. And two, I'm not attacking into any kind of tanks anyway, so they're, they're not very helpful. Yeah, okay, good. So now we should have a attack stack of 99, I think, going forward. Because this is an attack stack of 50, and we're not going to attack with them. So so here we go. Oh, well, uh, wow. I almost made a huge mistake and just decided to do that immediately. Um, definitely, what we have to do first is bombard. So I'm going to move, even though this artillery is going to be um, slower to the front, since I'm not moving it on the road, it's going to give us a good seven rounds of bombardment on this turn, and this one can at least give us six. So we'll go ahead and bombard as much as we can. They're in planes, so it should be relatively effective. Let's hope. I really hope. Okay, that was not as substantial as I would have hoped. Hmm. Okay, well. I have a new idea here as well now. We can attack from all three hexes. I just need to move this guy here and then attack. So that just basically uses an additional 30 action points, but we're not expecting him to be able to move for any further south. So we'll do it just to give us any kind of bonus we can. This will give us the attack stack to be able to attack from three sides. We get 20% concentric bonus, which is good. We need everything we can get. And, uh, we want this guy to cross the river anyways, right? So we'll do this. I think that that was very smart, that decision right there. I should have seen it earlier. Okay, but still we're gonna take a lot of casualties. Wow, I didn't. that didn't turn out as poorly as I expected it might. We killed 64 units. Okay, that's very important. Wow, what a battle. Actually, that worked out. That worked out very well. Now we can see that even though I just crushed their forces, I assume they moved down here, but we can see that the forces down here are still pretty strong. <clears throat> Just meaning we're not gonna be able to move in and attack them. Oh, geez, man, they have so many forces on the south. Yeah, so the definitely our decision here is gonna be move this one forward. Good, that was really important. We really needed to do that. So we've extended our lines. This is the advantage of armor. We're really, we're just gonna um, bypass this position. So <clears throat> this is the idea of swear point, right? You have a spear point on a, on a critical hex. And then once you break by the enemy lines, you just push your tanks all the way through, cut off the supply routes. Okay. So that, that didn't go so poorly. I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Let's move our machine guns. Actually, we'll move our machine guns south because they're just as effective attacking into the swamps. And we'll move our rangers forward because there's a lot of open plane stuff over here that I suspect we'll be getting into. We'll keep moving our engineers forward. There's just no reason for them not to move forward. And uh, we could do this attack here, but I don't see any reason to do that. Um, so what I think we'll do is just kind of shift the forces and we'll do that. <clears throat> so we're just shifting forces forward now. If they choose to recross the river, I have this one ranger unit in reserve. 
but that's all I can really afford is that one Ranger Union Reserve. Now we also did uh, create our new light tank unit over here. So let's actually get the light tanks in there. And just before we forget, let's do it again because we're, we're gonna get more tanks. Actually, um, this is interesting. I think actually that we should consider using the tanks and other, like we're, we're kind of saturating the need for tanks in the south. Whereas tanks could be incredibly helpful, for example, on our push to Neem. They could even be really helpful if we wanted to try to push to Velberg from the north. So, um, let's strategically move this guy. I, I kind of think that it's not important for... I think it would be more important for us to get tanks somewhere else. Well, let, I might need, I might be able to create, yeah, I can create a new ranger unit here. I'll leave it for now, but let's just move this tank forward. Wow, this guy could even attack. <laughs> hmm. Obviously, we don't want to do that. We're going to move him forward here, I think. Because of the swamp, this it's impassable. We can't get north this direction. I could actually move this unit north. It can get into Oxford this turn, which means it'll be able to cause havoc next turn. Let's see, how many tanks do we have here? One, two, three. We have three tanks. I think that is a pretty effective fighting force in the south. And certainly it looks like it'll be enough for us to cut off their units on the next turn. So let's go ahead and do it. Yeah, let's push this uh, unit north to Oxford instead. Good. And this unit, because I want I think the idea here now is just to cut off these units and starve them. To do that, we're probably going to need at least one, uh, just, I guess we're only going to need probably two units in this hex and um, just one unit along the front. So two units, one, 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 one. So two, one, 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 one. So we need six total. One, two, three. Four, five, yeah, we need, we need, so let's get another ranger group over here. You are special forces. And move you forward. Good, so that'll help. Um, the reason I, I could have moved one of these guys into this too, and to be honest, it'll probably be better for us to have seven. <laughs> Just have, I'm sure that these three won't need assistance as far as, holding this area, but um, it might be nice to have two over here instead of just one. One can definitely hold this hex because this is a river cross, or I mean, I don't think that they'll be able to put enough forces here to push me out. Okay, this is swamp also, I should note that. This is probably a headquarters, probably a headquarters here too. Hmm. All right, well, let's get to the action in the middle area now. We have one artillery. I don't, there's nothing it can reach but this armored cars, and I think it's time for us to try to dislodge this armored car unit. So let's do our artillery, artillery bombardment. Hopefully we get lucky. Come on, get lucky. Just one. Ugh, <laughs> that was terrible. Ah, so terrible. Um, we're still gonna attack it. Let's move this uh, ranger with AT guns there. Do we have any with AT guns that can attack? No. Oh, we don't have a whole lot of AT guns here, do we? Hmm. So this guy can't move and attack, so um, we'll just leave him there, because he'll be able to move up if we do successfully defeat this unit. Okay, so we'll attack with AT, machine gun, machine gun. So we want one more machine gun in the attack. I guess this guy? All right. So we'll attack with all, and then I think because we'll be able to attack stack, I'll take off this one ranger unit, which means we're attacking with AT, machine gun, machine gun, no, nothing, and then machine gun. The submachine guns at least get a 25% bonus in the forest. I'm hoping that that can really help us, considering we only have one anti-tank gun, and we're going up against 
pure armor. Now the good news is, armor does not defend very well against infantry on the defense, so... I was expecting casualties. Oh, not that bad. Really not that bad. Okay, that was good. So we killed four at the cost of eight infantry. Uh, it's probably about even. Oh, that's better than even. I just prefer always better than even. So yeah, we'll move him in. We'll move him in. I don't think there's any point in moving this guy backwards, so we'll leave him there. <clears throat> kind of the same situation with this guy. Is it worth moving him in? I don't think so. Okay, this is actually out of supply, so I'll probably move him, but for the time being, let's just leave him. Um, and let's do an attack on these guys. Yeah, let's do it. They're basically out of supply, out of readiness, so I hope that this, like, about 8 to 1 ratio, really closer to 6 to 1 ratio, holds up for us. Okay, that's actually, that's good. That's good. Oh, that's very good. Wow. We lost only three units and we killed, sheesh, 70? An incredible number. So really, 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 really worth it. And we can even do a follow-up attack. Now, I definitely want to follow up the attack here to kill some more staff and some more rifles. And that means we can probably cut them. We can surround these guys. Yeah, we can do it. All right, all right. So I'm going to do it. We got to push into here. And the follow-up attack is, this is typically what you'd expect, that the follow-up attack, if you have the ability to push on to a broken unit, they're just, you're just routing them. They're practically broken. So we can, we have the ability to move, okay. <clears throat> so what's weird is this is like the one hex you can't do well with. <laughs> oh, dang it, I, I could actually Build a road north. I'm gonna do it. It's silly, but it I'm only doing it because I think it brings these guys into supply. It does. Perfect. And we had the ability to do it, just cost a little bit of raws, who cares? Now, yes, we want to get this machine gun into the forest. That's exactly what I wanted. It's perfect. And oddly enough, this supply this hex is in supply. And I don't really, because of that, I don't see a reason not to move a unit here. I mean, it, it's not that I need the unit here, but infantry moves pretty, f it moves at only an action point cost of, thing, I think, of 35 through the swamp. So we can actually push past the stream. And that gave us good reconnaissance, if nothing else. Yeah, I'm glad I did that. Okay, so now the last thing we have to do is, like I was saying, we have to push past. Obviously, that's a pretty vulnerable unit. At least he's protected by the stream a little bit, but they have units here, and I mean, actually, if we have the ability, can we follow up? Does anybody have the an ability to attack? We do. We can attack with one unit, which is into the forest against five armored cars. Uh, it's not good. It's not good. I don't want these armored cars to be able to attack. They're cut off from supply. Let's just hope that their readiness drops instead of increases. And that's going to be based purely on their logistics. If they have supply with them, they'll be able to increase their readiness. If they're already down to very low supply, then they'll lose readiness. So we don't know what it is. I'm just rolling the dice. <clears throat> but to be honest, things around this area have been in pretty low supply. So it's hopefully not the worst guess. Okay, so I got a real frog in my throat today. I apologize about constantly clearing my throat. So that, it's nice. That road really helped. Now we're in full supply. We get full supply anywhere, except for here, but okay, I'll take one bad hex. I don't think it's worth it for this guy to put a road all the way north. That's like something I would do eventually, like behind the scenes. It makes sense to have a road here, but... For now, I think the, okay, well, actually, the bridge, if as long as we hold these two bridges, there's no, we don't need to have him repair any bridges. So maybe that's what this guy will do. He'll just connect this area. It will make um, troop supply easier. 
it could help us move armor around. So, okay. All right, well, we've gone 20 minutes and we're still on the same turn. Um, we're gonna double bombard this because it's massive. <laughs> Um, the good news is we will be getting the attack stack. They definitely have an attack stack, right? They have 50, 50, yeah. So they're over 100 for their stack, for sure. So we just want to um, take advantage of that by doing artillery attack, which should be, have slightly better efficiency. And that's pretty good, killing about, about 20 units. Also, of course, the advantage is that we're weakening them so that they can attack us. Although sometimes you want them to attack you, you know, it's like, they, would, you'll, they will lose more units in the attack than you will, so. <clears throat> we'll also choose to bombard this unit. We're not getting much out of it, but okay, three and lowering the readiness, entrenchment, etc. Just to prevent this uh, attack, because this is a pretty weak unit overall. It could probably stand to be reinforced with a few machine guns. I'm also going to shift my forces Kind of, I want to attack this unit eventually, but I don't want to attack with this machine gun unit because open planes and everything. So what I'm going to do is just shift every unit along the front a little. Actually, what I'll do is I'll shift this one too, so that this guy can preserve his entrenchment bonus. That's a really minor difference, but um, yeah, we'll just take advantage of it. All right, they did leave this hex open for us. The only reason why I would move a unit forward Probably still the reason why I will is because I want scouting information. We could even move him forward and then move him back. This does increase our reconnaissance. Otherwise, it's still like a death valley in here. Oh wow, this is a very strong unit. So we'll bombard that one, probably with both of these. Let's just do that right away. It's, it just it seems like the most obvious decision. Okay, come on. Wasn't nearly as good as I expected, but their readiness is really, really lowered. Hmm. Okay, 38. It's better to look over here. So they have 38, 6, and 29. All right, well, that's a total of about well, almost 80. I don't think I can attack that, yeah. Okay, so we'll just hold our positions for now. We also have the op opportunity to do some attacks here. So let's bombard with our better artillery. That seemed pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that, wow, that's, uh, okay, that's very good, actually. I can push to this forest, actually. I can get there. And I can cut off this unit, which is, <laughs> we're not talking about a whole like a game-changing swing that I kill eight more rifles, but why not, right? Which means I need to attack into this hex with two units because we need one unit to cut off. We need one unit in each hex to cut off. Obviously, we need the infantry out of here then. <clears throat> and we'll use the rangers as well. Leave the machine guns kind of protected from... Well, I mean, I'll just leave that. Do we even need the machine guns in here? I don't know. But anyways, let's attack with the rangers and the infantry. I This should be just a slaughter because they're so low readiness. We lost a few units, but that's to be expected. We'll move both forward, and who should actually move into this hex? I think we the linchpin, the anchor point, is here, which is more important. And it's more vulnerable, I think, so I'll move the... Riflemen here, because the rangers who are in better shape will hold the line. I mean, these guys also get a higher entrenchment because they're moving into forest, which just provides you higher initial entrenchment. We actually have the ability to attack these units. Hmm. We could move the uh, machine guns in here to further support this move. These guys, I suspect, will not have the action points to even move to this forest. If they did, they would just put up themselves in a position to be attacked from more sides. OK, 
Okay, this will cost 50. Will they have enough movement points to move in here? No, it costs 50 to move there as well. Damn. What they would be able to do is move here and then move back, which sounds strange. Like, why would you do that? But at least I'll cut off that area. So I'll just do that. Now they're just a reserve force. I don't know what we'll use them for, but I don't even know why I did that. I'm not sure if it makes sense. But what's done is done. Now let's also bombard these guys. <clears throat> not getting quite as lucky, but they're in the, the city, so they're not gonna be as easy to, to attack. But that, that should lower their ability to counterattack. All right, I guess the rest of it stays as is. We have this ranger unit who we can kind of move a little forward. The obvious choice seems to be to keep protecting Coutants, so move them there. Um, we'll leave them there because we actually need to defend. We have a huge amount of artillery that we need to defend. So, <laughs> I guess artillery, what is their battle stack? 10? Yeah, stack points is 10. <clears throat> so you don't really want to engage, you don't really want to get into a battle with artillery <laughs> because they take up a lot of attack stack. Okay. We do have one more artillery here. Uh, it looks like these guys, yeah, that's uh, they're over the attack stack limit as well with 42 and 60 and armored cars. Just so that will be our artillery target. We're just nibbling away at these guys. We constantly do this and we don't really accomplish much, but one day these guys will be weak enough for us to attack in and we can attack from four hexes. It's pretty good. All right, I guess that's all we want to do for this turn, and it's probably all we're going to do for this episode. It, we moved a little slower. I did the overview in the beginning. Um, let me also, since we're going to take it easy on this episode, show you what my production is currently at. I, I keep just jumping this back and forth with supply. Um, I'll show you why. I'm trying to achieve the optimal for supply here. Uh, this guy should probably move forward too, since all his units have moved forward. So let's move him. Let's move him here. So uh, yeah, what was I what was I saying about that? Um, basically, I'm monitoring the supply stockpile. I'm trying to get things just about right. So now he should be a little closer. That should be more effective. Let's go to this overview again. I don't want I I want to build a lot of machine guns because machine guns right now are being used for my new tank divisions. Um, and let's see. We have the artillery still coming in. I think it's still fine to set it to the middle area, um, Dwight Eisenvalue. He's been using all of them every turn. He hasn't even moved any of them. Not that he can, because he doesn't have horses yet. We should give him some horses real fast. But <clears throat> I'm trying to balance this supply. So I'm just trying to make sure I get a little bit more than I need. But we're at 9,000 for a supply stockpile. It's pretty high. <laughs> um, as long as this creeps up, as long as it's not dropping, then I'm okay. So if it ever drops, I need to make some severe changes because it's better to accrue a big supply stockpile. You might have to upgrade some unit or something and it's nice to have a big stockpile ready. Oh, good, I, I missed that we can move this guy forward. And this seems to be the logical choice. This guy can also move forward. Actually, we can do a bit of creeping here, especially with this tank in here. We might as well move like, let's say let's move the 15th forward and we can't move further forward but we can move like these guys we can probably move both of them out okay this is a three side uh this is round on three sides so let's not move all three but let's move this one forward then and we probably don't even need both of these units so let's move the 77 morale forward because they'll be able to attack soon and that'll increase their morale if they can be involved in a successful attack. Okay, so that's good. Now, where is this guy needed? Uh, okay. I think we'll move him here. So he's more able to get involved next turn. And unfortunately, our push over here, we're doing a lot of damage to the Germans. It has meant that the Germans and the French won't be as involved attacking each other. Because we kind of cut off the front. We're, pu we're putting ourselves in between them. But it's so juicy. We had to do this, right? Just to eliminate all these units. 
And this is the road to Fishhawk, so we need to make sure that we do everything we can to weaken the Germans so we can get to Fishhawk. Basically, I'm not too worried about Neen. If we're able to push through the forest or, I don't know, an armored sweep from behind, there's lots of different options to get to Neen. So. Okay, so what was I saying? I needed to do some transfers. Let's get some horses, which we have quite a few now. Let's just transfer them directly to these units. Four for you. Four for you. And we didn't create a new unit yet, but so let me do that. And get these guys here. I'm doing this um, this way I, I, so I don't double transfer the horses. Just gonna transfer them once. And four horses for you. So that worked out well. I guess we'll give these guys four horses preemptively for next turn. And how are these guys doing on horses? Let's give the rest there because we're creating eight new horses which are all gonna go to Gray, the Gray headquarters immediately. So he doesn't need to have any horses already available. In the same way, I think it's kind of nice to start buffering up my um, subordinate headquarters with some units. This guy has four rangers. Let's give him like a, a bunch more. I don't know where these rangers are destined for. I'm sure that there's many more places that need rangers now. Let's just give him 40. And I don't think the red needs as many. Whoa, I lost my red. There you are. He doesn't have any in reserve right now, though, so let's just give him 30. Now, same thing with machine guns. This guy has 5. Let's give him 15 more. And we'll give red 10 preemptively. Good. The rifles, we might as well just give, uh, keep in the main because we don't know, I don't, I know that both red and um, yellow, especially yellow, have these normal um, infantry hexes, so um, normal infantry divisions with the riflemen. So I'll, I'll let those guys just be distributed on an as need, on an as needed basis. Oh, the last thing we can probably distribute is some submachine guns, which these guys probably need to get. Let's just give him 20. And this guy has plenty. Uh, he already has 21 ready to go. Let's give him 10 more. Good. And I think as far as staff goes, let's just check. We're at 111, 107, and 102. So let's give the northern headquarters maybe... Um, let's just give him... I'm going to say 8 more staff. Okay. I think that looks good. So we're just kind of bolstering our um, headquarters. As soon as I take Fishhawk and I'm able to settle down a little bit, I definitely want to continue switching. I, I want to make a new headquarters, actually get my Southern HQ. So this guy gets a new experience level at 175. I think after 175, I'm going to pull this guy off the front and just create a new headquarters at that point. Since we're starting to win, as soon as we can take this area, now we, it's important that we push on first. Even if we bypass our HQ proximity, it's important to push on to Fishhawk before they can start reinforcing there. That's the whole point with an, hour, uh, an armored advance. Get there before they have the time to reinforce. Because you can see what happens. Like, when we start pushing a little bit towards Deem, they're going to bring up tons of forces to prevent us from taking it. Right now, they're still, it looks like, under the mentality that they can actually push towards York. It was that same mentality which cost them coutons. So. Good. Well, let's see. Um, any other transfers I need to do? I don't think so. Um, I do actually want a new unit of armor. Oh yeah, so let's choose where our armor is going to go now. The question is, do I need red to have armor? They'd be moving through a lot of forest, which is not ideal, obviously, for armor. This area right here is 
very susceptible to an armored attack, but the problem is there's no strategic value to it. It would be nice to attack, sure, and just kill units for the sake of killing units, but... However, Neem does have one little channel, one little avenue for armor. And then we can kind of just roam around with the armor along the fringes and do all kinds of damage. So yes, we will get the armor into red next turn, which means we want to create a new unit. Preemptively and transfer in eight machine guns and two rangers. Now, these guys are going to have very low readiness this turn because um, they were double transferred. <laughs> Shoot. That's why we we should generally have a lot of units already ready to go. So I'm going to actually transfer some more machine guns. And, uh, okay, just two more rangers. The rangers are not as important, but let's get a lot of machine guns ready so that red can create next turn. I want them to be able to create eight new machine guns and two new rangers without having that huge readiness penalty, which is actually not going to allow us to move as far as I want on the next turn. But the good news is this guy, um, our, the armor we just moved up here, he can do the attacks if we need anything. So, Okay, so let's end the turn as I always want to do at the very end of the episode um, and then see, give, give myself some time to think about what to do after we see how the enemy reacts. So we'll end the turn. Russia is doing something. You can see that they pushed to Lorient pretty far. Okay, now what will happen? Nothing. An attack. Uh, it looks like success. This is interesting. Okay, well, one attack, which we, yeah, we did, we did succeed. Wow, he's reached 250 experience points, gained level 5. It's incredible. He gained a new feature, too. All right, well, let's first of all see what's going on with that. John Newton, what's your new feature? Able to complex tasks. Okay. So some kind of bonus, basically. All right, so uh, it's pretty obvious what we're going to do here. Just eliminate those forces. It looks like they did have a little bit of supply because they're only down to readiness of 20. Again, I suspect our bombardments will go here and here. Maybe even double here. Scan along the front. We were attacked here, so let's just look at the history. I'm just gonna jump to the battle. So we were attacked from three sides. However, we only lost three riflemen and two machine guns. And they lost four armored cars and 25 riflemen. Now, one thing I'm gonna definitely do, probably I should just do this immediately, is I need to increase the number of rifles. Let's see, so this guy got almost all the rifles he needs. The two rifles that are here, they should go here. I'm actually going to redirect them to here. And we'll put two more machine guns in there as well. That's going to mean he can't do anything this turn. Okay, well, I don't think... Yeah, there's no way he's going to do any attacks, so we'll just... Oh, well, this is a pretty weak unit, maybe. All right, so I'll leave it alone. We'll I'll think about it off camera. Hmm. Doesn't look like there's any weakness here. We're probably just going to have to blow through here, like I said, to get to Neem. Probably pile up a bunch of infantry, send the armor in, and then when the armor breaks through, send the infantry right behind. Schwerpunkt. Okay. They've moved some people out of here now, finally. <laughs> so this means it's probably the right time to do the attack here. We do have this nice situation where they are defending against each other now. And I would like to encourage that, so we probably won't do any more attacking north. Just let the Germans and French fight. Obviously, we'll eliminate this unit on this turn. <laughs> It'll take over half of our movement to get here, but it's just, I think it's, the, it's absolutely necessary for us to do that and then do a bombardment. There's nothing else for this artillery to do. Might as well just do that immediately, see how lucky we get. 
Not very, but something. I mean, something happened, right? So, um, it's probably still worth attacking considering we're surrounding it. So we get the 100% concentric bonus. I mean, that's double your attack value. It's a huge number. Okay, yeah, they've uh, reinforced here. Uh, I'm not going to bother trying to attack that, especially because on top of reinforcing, they actually <laughs> have even used some kind of card to increase their capabilities. We'll definitely be able to attack this unit. Not this one because swamp, but we can break out here and just push as far as we can. All armor will just stream east along the central road. And we'll leave the southern coastal road for mopping up later. Okay. Yeah, well, I guess that's it. So we'll call this episode to a close. Thanks for watching. Um, this is really exciting. I'm having a really good time, especially now that we're actually on the offensive. <laughs> so stay tuned next time where hopefully we'll be able to capture Fishhawk and um, maybe even push towards Neem. Uh, thanks for watching.